Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can start using API key based authentication in your REST API or any API for that matter in .NET Core. For those of you who have been following this series for a while, you might have seen that we're using JWT based authentication to authenticate and authorize our users. API key is a bit different. In this scenario, we'll be using a static key across the whole API or maybe a key per type of thing we want to authenticate. And I say type of thing because usually you'd use those keys to let other services integrate with your API. An example would be the GitHub API where you might get a developer key for this API and then you give that key on every request so GitHub knows it's you. But that doesn't change. You don't need to enter a username or a password. It's just a static API key. In the example I will show now, I will use a single API key for everybody. But if you wanted to have one per service you're allowing to integrate with you, then you could just simply do that. I'll explain how simple it is. There are many ways to do that and there are many locations for the key. It can go in the header, it can go in the query as a parameter, it can go, it, it, it can be in the authorization in so many places. For my example, I'll just create a new header, the API key header, and I will get it from there. But you can put it wherever you want and nobody would be the wiser. Well, with some exceptions, but you get the point. So we've seen before how we can use claims and policies to do something like that. And probably the most examples you'll find online are using those. But I'm more about simplicity and we can do this in a very, very, very simple approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the filters folder we have and I'm going to say create a class and I'm going to name this class API key auth attribute. And I'm going to create that class and I want this class to extend the attribute class and also the I async action filter interface. And we're going to be forced to implement uh, the missing members. So what do we got here? Let me just explain to you what this is. First, this will be an attribute. So we'll be able to do something like this to decorate our controller or our method in the controller to add the API key authentication. What is the I action filter do? Well, it adds this method and this method, if you add the attribute on the controller or the member, then automatically the call will go through this as if it was a middleware. It is a middleware, it is a filter. So if I delete this throw new and I turn this into an async, then I can do a wait next, which is this action execution delegate. And what this means is that this is now part of my, sorry, that's not after, that's before, and that is after. And what this says is that this, before it goes on our controller as a middleware, the call will come here, and then I'll invoke next, then it goes to the controller, and then coming back, it will go on the after section. In this scenario, we don't care about the after section of the call, we only care about before, because we want to catch the API key. So in here, we'll go all our logic to validate the request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the API, uh, the app settings, sorry, and I will create a new setting called API key and I'm going to put my key here. So this is my secret key and that's here. And I'm going to leave it there. And now through the context, the action executing context, I can actually get the incoming request. And I'm going to do just that. I'm going to say HTTP context request and I want a header, the API key header. And let me just put that into a constant here. So private constant string API key header name, just to clean it up a little bit. And with that here, I can now do try get value. And this will try to find this API key header in the headers. So I have to say API key header name here, and then I will get the value out if it exists. So API key, or maybe a better name is potential API key, because it might not exist. And this try will only be true if this header exists. So if the header doesn't exist, we want to return unauthorized. So I'm going to say if this does not exist, then context.result equals new unauthorized result. So return a 401 and then we return here and we return and we never invoke the next middleware, which is the controller in this case, because we don't want to go to the controller because we, we say, hey, you don't have the API, can you require it? So let's go back. 
at this point another thing I do is to get the actual API key because now this has a value and I need to validate it somehow. So you can get any service through the HTTP context. We cannot use a constructor here because we will be required to provide this service when we use the attribute and it would not work. This makes the stability of this a bit harder, but we will make a unit testing video and I will show you how you can unit test this in the future. It's not complicated at all. So I'm gonna say var configuration and I will get the configuration from the uh, DI container. So HTTP context dot request services. These are the services we have in the container and then get required service. And I'm gonna get the I configuration service. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say API key equals configuration dot get value and string. And that's the header name which is also the name of the setting here. In fact, I'll, I'll just change this because this can change and they don't represent the same thing. You can have a nested uh, configuration in there. So let's say it's here. And now I have the key. So all I need to do to validate it is if the API key equals potential API key, and I wanna say it does not equal the potential API key, then I can return unauthorized. Else go to the next, which is the controller. And that is all we need to do to add API key based authentication. It's literally just that. In this scenario, if we wanted to, uh, you know, use a query string parameter, you can very much do the same thing where you just get the request and you get the query string collection and then you say API key from the query string and you validate that this way. It's, it's very simple, very straightforward. So now that we have this, we don't actually even Oopsie. We don't actually even need to uh, register anything. We can simply just use it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a just a test throwaway controller. So I'm going to call it secret controller. And again, this is a controller that not a user would use, but another service integrating with you, potentially a login service, a health check, what we're going to see later, a metric collection, There's many things that you might want to use this uh, with. Uh, another thing I want to do before I show you that is I want to restrict the attribute usage. So we can use the, I think it's called attribute, yeah, attribute usage attribute, which says that this attribute is valid on, and I want to use it in a class, and I also want to use it on the method. Now, if this attribute is used on the class, every method in this controller, so every endpoint, will require this type of authentication authorization. However, if I use it on a method, only that method, i.e. only that endpoint will need it. For now, I'm just going to put it here as an API key off. And this needs to be um, controller base. Yeah. So I'm going to create an HTTP get. And I'm going to give it a name just secret and I'm gonna say that this is a public I action result get secret that's not how you spell secret still not how you spell a secret yeah perfect and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return okay I have no secrets and that's it so now Everything in this controller will require this type of authorization. Let's go ahead and see this in practice. I'm gonna use a postman for this. So here we go, let's make a new tab. And that is the URL of our API. So let me just run it quickly. So it's running. And if I just call this endpoint, you will see that 401 unauthorized. Now let's go on the headers and just add the API key header, but give a false value because the real key is my secret key here. But if I just put some random stuff, you can see that it's still 401. And I can just debug through that to show you what's happening. If I just click send. Yep, you can see that we have the context, we have the request. And I can step through the code and you'll see that configuration is getting my real key, which is my secret key. It's comparing it to the potential key, which is that random nonsense. And it's returning unauthorized. So let's actually return the real key and see what happens. If I just paste it here and say send. Sure enough, the real request response is coming back. I have no secrets and it goes to the controller. So simple as that to add API key authorization authentication. It's, it's very straightforward. That's all I had for you for today. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.